So I'm going to go on over to the board and talk about budgets. All right, so what is a budget? So a budget is um, something that you may have heard uh, on the news or heard in your family, like you'll hear that your parents, oh, we have to watch our budget this week. Or you might hear the president talk about, oh, we have to balance the budget. So the budget is just talking about money, and it's a way to keep track of your money over time, okay? So that's all a budget is. It has to do with money and keeping track of it over time. So lots of different people use it. So we're going to talk about what is a budget. All right, so a budget is an estimate of expected income and expenses for a future period of time. So, and why would you need a budget? So we're going to talk in a minute about what an income and what an expense are. But as we think about this, it's an estimate of the expected income. So we're trying to figure out how much money we think we're going to get. We're trying to think about how much money we think we're going to spend. And we're going to do that over time, because how much money you have today may not be the same amount as how much you have tomorrow. So you kind of have to think ahead of where you're going to go. OK, so the question is, why would you need a budget? So we said in the beginning, why do you need a budget? We need a budget to help us figure out where our money is, and it helps us figure out long-term goals. Like uh, the story that Donna was talking about for our math maze today, that Joaquim needs $100 for his mom. So he needs to figure out how is he going to be able to save that $100 over time. And he's going to think about the money that he takes in, and he's going to think about the money that he's going to spend. So the reason you need a budget is to help you so that you don't basically spend more money than you actually have, because then you end up in debt, and that's not so good. OK, so this is to keep us on the positive side. All right, so next, income. Income is the money you receive during a period of time from wages, interest, and other sources. So your income is how much money you are taking in. So you get that, right? So when we look at this, it's the in. The in is a really important part on that, how much money is coming into you, OK? So income can come from lots of places. It can come from money that is earned. So you're raking somebody's leaves. Um, you had a really good report card. Uh, you have a job. Money that is earned counts as your income. It's money that you're adding to your account that you're adding in your budget. That's on the plus side. It's a positive experience, things that you earn. Gift money, that also counts. So even though you didn't work so hard, that counts as something that you would add as your income. Uh, interest for money. So sometimes when you get older or if you put money in a savings account, you get some interest off your money, which means the bank, if you'll put $100 in the bank, the bank might give you a dollar for keeping your $100 in the account. So interest from that money also counts as income because it's adding into your account. It's adding money up. And winnings too. So sometimes if you win something, you win a prize, you won $25 somewhere, that also counts as income. So income is everything that we're adding. On the opposite end, is expenses. So think of expenses as like exits, things that are going out of your account, OK? And then we're looking at the X there. It's money that's spent during a period of time to pay for goods or services. So it's money on any item you buy, no matter what you buy, even if it's good for you, right? It still counts as an expense. Uh, money that you pay back. Oh, I owed my sister $20. OK, you're paying that back. That is an expense. That's something that you have to pay. Money used to pay somebody else. Oh, I paid my little sister to do my homework for me. Um, that is going to be an expense. Don't do that. And money that is interest from borrowing. So likewise, if I say to you, I will lend you $100, but you're going to have to pay me back $101, that $1 still counts as an expense, as something that I have to pay. All right, now we're going to take these pieces and we're going to tie them together. And when you put those two things together, you talk about how much money you have coming in and how much money you have coming out. Whatever is left is called your balance. It's the amount of money that's available after your income and expenses are accounted for, OK? So that's that's what the balance is. And you always want to keep your balance in a positive mode. So what I want to show you here is for our budget, this is the definition we had before. You'd like to keep cap track of your things on a ledger, OK? Um, sometimes people call this a spreadsheet. You might call it uh, uh, a ledger. Uh, so as we look at this thing here, you've got different places. And we're going to actually take a minute, and we're going to fill some things on a ledger to keep track of how we do it, OK? So here we go. I've got a few ideas here on my ledger. I see I've got my date column. It's important to keep track, because you have to enter items chronologically. Chronologically means according to time. You have to mention what you bought, your income, anything that is going to add to your income. We talked about those conditions before. Expenses, anything that's going to take away from your expenses, and how much money you have left as your balance. So let's take a look at this first one. These are all in order. I see on 1120, Grandma gave you $25 for your birthday. 
So I'm looking at 1120 and I'm looking at the item and I see that it's grandma gave me $25 for my birthday. I'm just gonna call that item birthday money. Make sure you say thank you to grandma, by the way, okay? So it's birthday money. And I need to think about that. Is that gonna be an income or an expense? Is that something that's being added to my money? Or is that being something that I've had to spend? And we know gifts are great, right? Gifts are income. So we're gonna put $25 right here. And so when I think about it, if I had no money to begin with, and now I have $25 for my grandma, I've got $25. I am feeling really rich, okay? Done with that one. The next one that we have is on the 21st. And on the 21st, I spent $6 on snacks. I couldn't help myself, but I went down to the candy store and I bought some snacks. So think about it. That's something that you are paying. You are paying to the guy who runs the store. And my expense here is going to be $6, okay? Now, here's where we need to think about it. If you had $25 and you spent $6, you need to think to yourself, am I gonna add that six to it or am I gonna take it away? And we're gonna have to take away the six from 25. So my new balance is now going to be $19 because I subtracted the six. Something that's really helpful is to always put a minus sign here and a plus sign in your income so that you're remembering whether you're adding or subtracting. Okay, the next one we have on 1123, you paid back your sister the $10 you owed her, right? If you borrow money, you have to pay the money back. You don't get to just forget about it, right? So our item might be, oh, sister. And again, what you write here is kind of just for you to remember what it is. It doesn't have to be exact. It just reminds you of what you are. All right, you're paying her back. That's money that you had that you have to give to somebody. You have to, uh, that's going to be an expense. It's not coming in. So we're going to put $10 here. And I know when I come over here, since it's in the expense column, I'm going to subtract it. So now I only have $9. And I do want to tell you, sometimes people don't always write the money sign because it's kind of obvious that we're always talking about money here, right? And the last one we have here is on 11:24. you earn $5 from your allowance, okay? So I'm gonna earn money on my allowance. Yay, I'm getting some more money. It's my allowance. I got that for doing work. Like we said, that's how you get money. That's part of your income. We're going to put that in the plus column. So that goes in our income column. So now, instead of subtracting five this time, I get to add it, and I have 14. So what that means is that I have a $14 balance. That's how much money I have at the end of, by November 24th. And the different balances on the different days are different numbers. So remember that we said that keeping the budget was going to be over time. All right, I have one more thing that I want to talk about. And I want to talk about whether things are an income or an expense. A lot of times teachers try to teach kids like, oh, fees, fees are always an expense. But what you got to do is you got to keep your perspective. They're an expense for somebody, but they're income for a different person. So I want to take a few quick problems here and just try and figure out who they're income for and who they're an expense for, OK? So I've got Delia. She's going to pay by right $10 for a cake. Well, Delia is paying it, so it's an expense for Delia. But guess what? Buy right loves it as an income, right? So it's buy right as an income. The next one, we have John charges Aaron a $3 fee for borrowing his bicycle. That's not very nice. So John charges Aaron. So Aaron is going to have an expense, but John is getting some income, right? So awesome for John, boo-hoo for Aaron. And then the last one, Jaya gets $15 for her birthday from her aunt. So Jaya gets $15. So Jaya gets an income here. Right? And her aunt, even though her aunt did it and it was nice of her, it's still an expense for her aunt. Okay? So the important thing that I want you to get here is that when you do a budget, a budget is a way to help you save money over time. Whether it's an income and an expense depends on your perspective. You need to think about whether somebody is earning the money or receiving the money or whether they are spending the money. So hopefully that will help you to think about what you want to do when you're spending your money this holiday season.